Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to another day of remote learning. Uh, today's Wednesday. Uh, we're moving on from the addition and subtraction with our input and output charts, and we're moving on to multiplication and division. Uh, those of you who did the work, congratulations. Talked to a couple of you yesterday at the Google Meet. Uh, cleared up some questions. A couple of you uh, had some good questions, so that's great. Um, some of you did the Google Form, which is built into this Nearpod, but didn't do the next couple slides, which are part of the Nearpod, where you have to create input and output charts. I gave you the equation, and you had to go through and add the charts. So make sure that when you finish the Google Form and you hit Submit, you then hit the next arrow, which is on this side of the screen, that's going to take you, I think it's on that side of the screen, uh, which is going to take you to uh, your Google Form. And you're going to, uh, I'm not the Google Form, to the next parts of the Nearpod. Uh, so today there's going to be two charts you have to create after this. And then after those charts you create, there's one more part on the, the Nearpod that you'll have to finish. So make sure you're answering all of the parts to the Nearpod. So let's take a look at what we're going to be doing today. Like I said, we're going to be moving to uh, multiplication and division. So yesterday and Monday when we were going through and we were filling out our charts, we knew that everything was going to either be an addition or a subtraction problem. But today, they're not going to be. They're going to be multiplication and division problems. So let's look at this. All right. We are, here's our input output chart. Here's our X. Here's our input. Here's our Y. Our output. Now remember, whatever letters that this chart gives you, you have to use in making your equation. Uh, some of you didn't use these letters in your work, so you lost some credit. Uh, you've got to make sure you can't just make up whatever letters you want. We know that everything that goes on the right side of the equation is our input, and x is one of our inputs, and we got to figure out what the missing part is. And we know that the y, or anything that's output, output always goes on the far right side, and that's why we're going to put our y here. Now we have to figure out what is our symbol, multiplication or division, and we have to figure out what our missing term is. <clears throat> so we could start off. We have to find the difference between 2 and 8. So we could say 8 minus 2 is going to give us 6. That's what we would have done yesterday. But then if we did just like we did yesterday, and we did x plus 6 equals y, if I did that, that's going to hold true here. 6 plus 2 is going to give me 8. But if I went over to the next side, and I did 3 plus 6 is going to give me 9. Okay, so let's keep on checking. 4 plus 6 is going to give me 10. But that's not correct, because I know that the next term here in this input-output chart should be 16. So that's gonna help me figure out that, that this equation is not an addition or a subtraction problem. So it, an addition or subtraction is not going to work. And because I told you it is multiplication and division, so that's hopefully gonna make you figure out that this either has to be multiplication or division. So what happens if we did eight divided by two? Wow, that's thick, let's make that. Eight divided by two is gonna give me four. Okay, that sounds good. So let's try that. Let's put a multiplication symbol in here. X times four equals Y. Let's see if that holds true over here. Let's do three times four is gonna give me, what's three times four? Yeah, it's 12. So let's check the next one. Four times four is gonna give me 16. And that's what the chart's telling us, 16. So then if I do five, filling in my equation, I'm just plugging in the numbers into my equation, five goes where the x is, because that's what's up here. Four is my known, five times four, and then my y turns into the answer, so five times four is gonna give me 20. If I keep going and I do 20, which is my x, times 4, and then my y is going to be, what's 4 times 2? 4 times 2 is 8, so this is going to be 80. 
And then if I did 25, you know, these numbers are hard, I'm doing it on a keypad here, times four, what's my last digit gonna be? What's, what's five 25 cent pieces? Yeah, it's gonna be 100, very nice. Let's see if we got it right. Yep, 12, 20, 80, 100. Those are all the questions that we had, all right? 80, yep, great job. Keep on moving along. So the next problem here. Kathy is uh, uh, knitting hats for charity. The number of balls of yarn she can buy is represented by the amount of money she saved divided by six. So this one's actually telling us inside of it what we're gonna be doing with this problem. We are gonna be dividing by six. It tells us right inside the chart here. All right, so let's look at this. If this is telling us that our chart or our equation here is gonna be Y, which is our output, equals M, which is our input, divided by, and then what did it tell us that the number is gonna be? It told us it's gonna be six. So let's plug in these numbers. This six comes into the M, or the 12 would become the M, or the 24, or the 60. All those inputs go where the M is, right? where that input piece of information is. Let me erase all these lines here, okay? So let's take a look at this. Let's do six divided by, those are horrible division signs. Six divided by six gives me one. All right, so let's do 12 divided by six. And who remembers what that is? 12 divided by six, two. And then let's look at the next one. 24 divided by six. What's 24 divided by six? Four. 